Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome to another BD Armoury update video and this is a big one. Choddle. Yes, version 1.5 of the Runway Project Fog of BD Armoury has been released and uh, with it we get a rebranding. It's no longer BD Armoury for Runway Project, it's now BD Armoury Plus and there is one hell of a changelog to come with this one. Most of these changes are kind of in the background sort of stuff. Uh, bug fixes, code overhauls and optimizations, expanding BD Armory as a uh, framework for other mod developers to use. Um, and one of the things that has got fixed, which I'm delighted about, as you can see in the background here, is that uh, JDAM bombs will now hit their target reliably. Uh, it also gave me a chance to test out one of the parts here that was introduced into BD Armory a while ago, but I've never got around to using the SIDAM anti-aircraft gun, or I don't know, maybe it's SIDAM, or possibly even SIDAM, who knows? Um, but yes, as usual with these update videos, I have picked out a few of the more important and impressive changes which uh, I think you'll want to know about. So the first new addition I want to look at is a relatively simple one. Now, I'm sure we've all seen many BDA dogfights where, you know, your craft gets up to the set distance, turns around, the AI picks a target, fires missiles at it until it's got the, uh, the specified maximum number of active missiles on that target, and we'll later try to follow it in with guns. But technically, there's no real reason why it only has to target one craft, especially when it's got excess missiles and is sat back a fair distance like this. And, yeah... In the Weapon Manager, which you can also access through the Guard menu, there's a new option, Max Missile Targets. Here I have two uh, suitable targets just flying around the place, a, a pair of my Panthers, which aren't going to try and de uh, defend themselves. <laughs> a little cruel, but we'll, uh, we'll get the point across. And if I just put Autopilot and Guard Menu on, two missiles away at that target, two missiles away at that target. Yeah. So that's what this does, a simple but effective. Two missiles coming in for this one. It will add a little bit more of a dimension to setting up your craft. Uh, how you um, how you set up this value might affect how many missiles you want to put on your craft, etc., etc., etc. But that's that's the gist of it. We'll uh, we'll come back and have a bit more of a look at that in a genuine combat situation later on. But uh, in the meantime, there's a couple of other things I want to look at. A new part this time, if we take a look under one of my Red Hawks here, you'll see a strange kind of pod you might not recognise slung underneath, the ANAAQ42 IRST. And if we look at the modules, we can find it just there, looking good. And there's a little red blob on there. This thing actually can go for um, 100 kilometres max range. I think that's better than the radon will do. Yeah, I think the radon only goes up to um, 40 kilometres. And now we've lost the little red dot. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe a tiny little bug to, to work out there. But if I bring up the actual uh, vessel labels, we can see over there is one of my Panthers. So this is kind of a, an infrared alternative to uh, radar, actually used in real life on uh, on a few craft. Oh, I see. Yes, it, it's, it's more than 40 kilometers away. That's why we can't see it. Okay, that kind of makes sense. There we go, it should be back now. No, nope. Okay, as I said, a few bugs to work out. You can't currently use this uh, in conjunction with any weaponry. Um, it's just a new little part for you to play about with, and as I said, maybe detect some uh, detect some craft out of range if you're uh, if you're doing a scenario that calls for it. Yeah, that, that red dot has probably disappeared, hasn't it? Oh, no, there we go. We can get it. Uh, I assume that's... This thing is not behaving itself. Anyway, I think we should probably move on to the final edition of to BD Army that I want to cover in this video, and uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. So this last change really is a big one. Not to the AI, not to the way you'll fight your dogfight. It's not a brilliant new part, no. Um, well, let's... um. Let me explain. I mean, the whole process of designing craft like this in KSP is a lot of fun. I know a lot of people on my Discord, a lot of my subscribers really enjoy it, but there's one thing that's a pain in the ass, and that's having your beautiful new craft, and then having to go and um, painstakingly get the AI tune right. I've done a couple of uh, couple of tutorials on getting the basic AI tune uh, somewhere in the right region, but now there's a tool to help you. If I can just go and find the uh, the AI pilot unit on this... If I just bring that over here, you can also access this by clicking on the BD Armory AI window, although mine seems to be broken. I just get a grey line up here. I'm going to have to work out how to reset that. But one of the options you'll see, a new one is PID Auto-Tune. 
That's right, your craft will now tune itself. Uh, these numbers are pretty good, the uh, the default numbers. Um, so what do I do from here? How does this work? Well, now that I've activated PID Auto-Tune, I'm just going to activate the engines, activate the autopilot, let that take off, start flying around, and uh, we, we need to wait a minute. We need to keep an eye on this line here, auto-tuning loss, measuring, and when that changes, um, we can see what's going to happen next. Okay, so we've got a value. That didn't take long, about 20 seconds or so. Um, it's 60.5652. That'll jump around a bit to start with, and you'll notice the, um, the settings here are already jumping around the place. And what will happen is, over time, uh, to get a basic tune like this will take, um, I'd say, the best part of an hour. Your best bet is to just go and keep coming back to this every 10 minutes or so, and over time this value should start to drop, and when it starts dropping any significant amount, then you'll have this sort of the recommended tune from this process. The auto-tuning loss, that's basically how far from ideal your craft's manoeuvring behaviour is. So as that drops, obviously your craft will be getting a better and better tune. Uh, I have already done a longer run with the auto-tune with one of my Lynxes. Uh, I left it running, I think it was about 45 minutes, can't remember exactly. Um, but the loss there started at about 150 and over time got down to about 50 and kind of stayed there. So I. Uh, I took that as its recommended settings. So, uh, are these settings any good? Well, I suppose there's only one way to find out, and uh, let's see if we can throw something else from earlier in this video in as well. So we'll end today's video with the traditional 3v3 dogfight. Two teams of my Lynxes, except these three have had some adjustments made. They're carrying an extra AMRAM, and that is because I have uh, adjusted their missiles per target to one and their max missile targets to three. So each of them should get off one target at each of their, uh, each of their opponents. Also, this is the version where I have gone and put in the, uh, the tune that was suggested by the auto-tune just to see if that can give us a bit of an edge here. Let's um, let's get this going and see what happens. The competition starts. Bardnard and Kerman in one of the adjusted lynxes is around quickly. A missile away at one target, a missile away at a second target, and a missile away at a third target. I'm not sure how that will affect the uh, the evading ability. The, um, evading behaviours of the uh, the normal lynxes, whether or not having three missiles each coming in from a slightly different direction will uh, will harm them. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> one of the adjusted lynxes is already in some difficulty, although Bardnard and Kerman are uh, going with his second volleys. Uh, Luces all three of his remaining AMRAMs will now be trying to close the distance and uh, loose some sidewinders. Again, We'll be trying to go for one per target, one away, struggling to get... Oh my god! <laughs> the, the adjusted lynxes are not doing well. The adjusted... One of them is uh, one of them is heavily damaged, the others seem to be doing right though. <laughs> Maybe that tune is... Ah! Oh, that was just the... That was just the one that was already, uh, already pretty damaged. Bardnard and Kerman and, uh, and Leg of that Kerman a job on to save this one, but the leg of that kind of gets around pretty well. Trying to line up guns, can't quite manage it. Oh, we'll try and stick to the tail of this one though. Doing pretty well, all things considered. Hmm. Yeah, just that one, that one adjusted link's got a bit unlucky with uh, with a missile hit early on, and I think that um, that caused things to spiral. Leg of that Kerman though, having difficulty. Two of the uh, two of the normal lynxes currently uh, currently trying to shoot him out of the air. The other lynx, the other adjusted lynx, Bardnard and Kerman. Bardnard, it's kind of on you at the moment. You need to get in there, get a quick revenge kill. Some beautiful shots here as Bardnard and Kerman just twists and turns, but those other lynxes just managing nothing more than just the brief smattering on his craft. Oh my god, that could be it. Bardnard and Kerman, not too heavily damaged, has lost some stuff, loses some more stuff. Yes, that is it. I think the I think the adjusted lynxes are in real trouble now. Um, I think this is also a lesson in why you don't fight two of the same craft against each other. Because, uh, yeah. 
evenly matched, and evenly matched you get into these hideous just turning battles and nobody really hits anyone else. But yeah, my god, the uh, that other adjusted links for, uh, for Bardnard and Kerman, that held out a very, very long time. Like that Kerman, the attention of three of his um, more regular counterparts. Oh, almost... Oh, does he have a chance to line up guns? No. No, he's uh, trying to line up guns on one of the one of these other lynxes, but it's just not coming off for him. It's a collision! It's a collision! And Legolak Kerman's adjusted lynx goes out in style, and it looks like he's taken out... He's taken out one of the uh, one of the ordinary lynxes with him. That's one way to do it, I suppose. One way to deny your opponents a perfect victory, but uh, yeah. Yeah, one, one of these links is a little bit damaged, this other one in perfect health. I don't think that tune added much. I think I'd already done a pretty good tune on this craft anyway. So I think that might be a factor here, but given how closely matched they were, and that I had done a decent tune on this already. It looks like the auto-tune tool is pretty good. Huh. Anyway, well, that will be all for today. I will put a link to this uh, to this version of BD Army in the description. Um, but yeah, if you have enjoyed today's video and you haven't already, then uh, please consider liking, subscribing, following on Twitter, maybe getting involved with the Discord, great KSP and BD Armory, commu Armory community on there, and more besides. Uh, all those links in the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. You too can get your own little Patreon Kerbal like GT Kerman here. Um, I will be back soon with some more BD Armoury. Uh, until then though, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.